I presented that uh, lecture as an uh, well as a story of the three musketeers, the blue bullet, and new kids on the block. New kids on the block are not coming from Manchester, but unfortunately from Boston. But now I'm going to speak about space invaders. Space invaders, due to the fact that we are implementing, implanting assist devices in patients. So the story is, of course, a little bit different. On the uh, for you the left side, you see the wood, and on the right up or the left upper side you see the same picture, but then in the snow. And it sounds a little bit as patients who are scheduled for elephant implantation, they are in a less better shape. Some people like the snow, like I do, but others don't like it, and that makes it more difficult. So I'm not gonna do the same presentation. As I gave this morning, I will give here and there some summary of what I told this morning, but there are also some extra considerations. I, am a, I have some relations with Toratec Abbott and Cytosolvent, but that's all. So, what's Fasoplegia? Normally, you can hear me well? Okay. Normally, uh, physiological scene, we have resistance in our vessels. <coughs> And that means that we have some blood pressure. But pathologically seen, what is vasoplegia? We have a loss of vasomotor tone in the resistance vessels, and we have hypotension. So vasoplegia is a low vasomotor tone, unresponsive to vasopressors, or uncontrolled vasodilation, or catecholamine-resistant hypotension. However, we cannot measure vasomotor tone. It's quite difficult. We can measure arterial blood pressure, we do it every day in daily practice. And we do not measure every day a systemic vascular resistance. But systemic vascular resistance is related to mean arterial pressure. But well, yeah, what about vasomotor tone? I don't know. But it's important to know. So probably in future research you have to think about vasomotor tone. Well, what about vasoplegia? Well, there are no clear descriptions of vasoplegia available yet. There are many definitions used, and I will come to several factors in the next few minutes. But it makes research difficult. Research about risk factors, outcomes, prediction of vasoplegia, which is very important. Which patients in our population in our de might develop vasoplegia after the operation? Can we improve the health status beforehand? Can we think about things we can do interoperatively? Well, that makes it quite difficult. But components included in the definition are vasodilation criterion, hemodynamic criterion, and the vasopressor criterion. And in some definitions, there is a time criterion and a metabolic criterion. I will come later to that. What about vasomotor tone, hypotension, low systemic vascular resistance? Uh, we have a pointer? No pointer? Probably the mouse? You see the mouse? No. Okay. Well, in our hospital, Westlink published uh, recently in, uh, in the British Journal of Anesthesia in the June number this paper. It's a meta analysis of the studies relating low mean arterial pressure with outcome. Outcomes, mortality, morbidity such as um, a renal failure, myocardial infarction, stroke. And you can see here on the right, you can see that whenever the blood pressure is lower, that the odds ratios about severe outcomes are increasing. So the least value is a mean arterial pressure of 50 millimeters of mercury, and I think that that's the real minimum that we should take into account. And if we go for a 70 or a 60, then we have a lower, we have a high incidence of vasoplegia. And if you go lower, we have a lower incidence of vasoplegia. But well, I think the mean maximum, the least pressure we should have, mean is, is 50. That's quite low. What about the hemodynamic criterion? What cardiac index should we have in patients? <coughs> well, there is. There is a paper published in 1955 by a Brandt von Helder, I think. And he published a paper about what are the cardiac indexes we need to have.